grabber with lone wolf hot rods. With this segment, we're going to take a look at some good old-fashioned hot rodding shop hacks. Check them out! Moving big heavy parts in the shop can be a real pain. For that job, I use these. These are snowmobile ski dollies. Uh, these are three-wheel jobs. You can get them in four and they work super great moving things around in the shop. Check out how it works with the resist rear end housing. As you can see, it moves freely and easily. Just a quick little shove and you can slide it underneath the car. Don't like painting big, heavy parts in the shop, so I built this little rig to hoist parts up. You just use a couple of motorcycle straps and uh, a piece of pipe and you can pull the parts up and paint them. Cutting bulky pieces like this plate are difficult, so what I do is just clamp a Clamp it between a 2x6 and a couple of big clamps, and then you can cut it with, uh, with ease. And hey, use gloves when you're using a jigsaw, you'll be happy. Workbench gets beat up on a regular basis. I'm sure yours does too. One day I was in my wife's sewing studio, and I noticed she uses a rotary cutting mat when she's doing any kind of cutting work. And I thought about it that that might be really good for a table topper or a counter topper for my garage. So I got a couple of them. As you can see, they're marked, they've got a ruler built in, and you can use them for layout. Great idea. I like to know what the ride height of a car is before it's finished. That way, if you have to make changes, it's easy enough while it's still in the project stage. Ballast is the key. I ballast the back seat area and the trunk. And as you can see, I use weightlifting equipment, batteries, a logging chain, a flywheel, anything that works. I needed to drill a hole through hardened steel, in this case, the lower portion of the steering column. Man, I tried everything. I, every drill that I had, which included the following trio here, uh, uh, a hammer drill, a 3H drive drill, and a Mac Tools high-speed drill, nothing worked. Because of that, I went to a local machinist, and he clamped it in a bridge port after he annealed it and tried drilling through it. The result was a dent in the, in the hardened steel, approximately 10 thousandths thick. My option was to EDM the hole for $200 or buy drill bits. The first bit is a high speed bit. Basically, it doesn't work. It didn't make a scratch. So I went and looked at another one. The next one that came up was this, a titanium coated one that the guy at the tool shop said would absolutely, positively, 100% work. It even said so on the package. Look at this. For hardened steel. Doesn't work. Didn't make a dent in it. So then I watched, I looked at the internet and someone said use a masonry bit. So I did. So I looked around and I bought this masonry bit. And it too didn't work. So then someone said get one that works on a hammer drill like this fancy job here. Well it didn't do it, make a dent in the piece either. So I was starting to get frustrated. So the next drill bit I bought was this one. Looks kind of goofy. It's actually for granite tile. As you can see, it has no flutes. Funny looking drill bit. It goes through hardened steel like butter. It costs about 13 bucks. I highly recommend it if you have to drill through hardened steel.